Hello friends, I'm Samson Sound, and today we're going to be going through Meld, which is a fun little nifty synth inside Live 12 that you can use to get some pretty interesting and pretty unique results. It's a little bit of a different approach towards synthesis, however, it is pretty easy to learn Meld, so don't be intimidated if you're intimidated by new synths. It's kind of built to spit out happy accidents, and I think you can quickly sculpt it to match whatever your sound and whatever your voice is. So let's dive in. So the first thing you'll notice about Meld is that it has a pretty simple, pretty easily digestible layout. You've got oscillator A in the blue, and then oscillator B in the yellow. So if I tab over from A to B, you'll see that our envelopes and LFOs are changing colors so we know where we're working. And then we've got a filtering section over here, a mix section, and a few other controls we'll go over a bit later. However, from what I found, most of the magic happens right here off to the left where you have a bunch of very interesting waveforms. So if I scroll through, you'll see that these knobs are changing names. And these are essentially custom macros that our friends at Ableton have given us so that we can find some interesting results pretty quickly. A little boost in our sound design process, perhaps. So we go to basic shapes, we press a note, as you may expect, it scrolls through the shapes. Sign saw square, or you can change the tone with a little pulse width modulation. However, if I go to dual basic shapes, you'll see that this now says detune instead of shape. So if I hold down a note and boost the detune, it creates a second copy that's slightly detuned from the first, so we get a little wobble. We'll add back in oscillator B an octave below. Have that one wobble as well. Could create a cool little sine wobble for your intro. Can be good for meditative type music or ominous type music. Maybe a potential for a re-space. Continuing on, we've got square fifth. As you may guess, I'll start looping my melody so we can hear some of the magic of meld. It does add the fifth. Swarm sign. The swarm ones are really interesting. When I was playing around before, I think potential for a really interesting pad. Swarm triangle. Let's see what some of these FM ones are. Don't love that one. Squelch. For the bass heads. They've got the shepherd's pie. Can create sort of like an infinite riser. We've got, there's some FX and noise ones. They've got some noise, some crackle. The vinyl crackle sounds pretty nice. They've got rain. So we can get a little wind and rain and more rain drops if we boost the rate. Bubbles. Super bubbly. I'm just pressing notes on the keyboard, by the way. So tons of possibilities, a little bit of a different approach to synthesis instead of just going in with a saw wave, sculpting your ADSR, putting a, a little pluck shape on the filter, and adding some dimension and serum and thinking you've created the next best thing. All right, so now let's go on to explore one of the most interesting features of MELD, which is the scale awareness of the oscillators and filters. Certain oscillators and filters have this, so you see the musical accidental marks next to Swarm, Swarm Square, for example. So if I choose that and then I press this nifty button over here, it's going to lock to whatever scale we have picked in our MIDI clip. So if I just draw in some repeating notes, demonstrate this, we'll add the fifth as well. We're right now are in C major. So we're sounding. Sounding like C major. However, if we duplicate this, and for this one, we'll make this black and we'll choose C Locrian, which has some flat black notes instead of all white keys. It should sound different if Meld is truly doing its job and locking the scale.
So there you go. You can hear kind of the back and forth going from happier to a little bit of a darker scale. And so you could use this to create a pretty interesting chord stack. So let's do that. And let's enable one of the Scalaware filters. So again, down here, you'll see that these have the accidental marks. So I'm going to choose plate resonator. And we'll see if this back and forth effect sort of holds as we make some changes. So now the resonating frequencies are being locked to scale instead of just the pitch. So we'll call this one our plate resonator. And then we'll duplicate this. And let's make a more traditional chord for this one. We'll turn the filter off. And let's check out some of these other options over here in the mix and the output section. So if we want, we could add some stack and spread. We could add some drive, which is essentially distortion. So the spread is going to add a little bit of randomness to the volume and detuning of your notes. So now let's keep making layers. So let's duplicate our plate rezo and let's have a little bit of maybe a higher tink. That's nice. Let's see how this is sounding together. All right, we'll make one more layer. And for this one, we'll go maybe an octave down. And let's try Swarm Saw. We'll turn off the stack to give it a little more power. Sounded pretty good. So you could keep adding more layers if you wanted with those chord stacks. Feel free to go crazy with octaves. Um, although sometimes less is more. If you want a bit of a cleaner sound, it can be fine to just use one channel as well. Don't feel like you have to go crazy with the layers. A couple less things to mention in these sections over here. Right now we're on polyphonic mode. If you were working with the bass line, you could turn this to mono. And then we also have a mix section. So this is panning. This is your volume control. There is also a limiter. And then we have a tone knob. So let's say we wanted to solo this layer here. And this will basically act as a filter. If we wanted to maybe take out some of the lows and just have the very highs being layered in, we could do that or vice versa. So that is pretty much it for this section over here. One last thing I'll mention is that the filters are sort of custom as well. They have different options. So this one has Q for more resonance and drive. And then your comb has feedback and damping. So our friends at Ableton have tried to put a little bit of thought into some custom options inside Meld for us. All right, so let's go back to our original melody. Take some of the knowledge we just gained and also start diving deeper into some of the envelopes, the modulation matrix a little bit. So we've got a little melody. I'm making it pluckier here with the amplitude envelope. It's your simple ADSR. You can click and drag for different slopes. Let's go to the square fifth one, which I thought was interesting. Remember, as we boosted this knob, we got the fifth. And let's map an LFO to the fifth amount. So I'm going to go over to the LFOs. I'm going to open the modulation matrix here with this arrow. And as I move this knob, you can see it's highlighting up here. So I'm going to map LFO1 to the fifth amount. And we are going to turn retrigger off so that it doesn't retrigger every note. And we'll go over the course of a bar, perhaps, so we can hear this. And let's just explore some of the LFOs and see how it's sounding. 
So you can see it there going up and down. Change the shape. Ramp. Sounds pretty cool. Wander. Let's go back to a bar. And so there's also LFO1 effects over here. So as I change this, you can see LFO1 is overlaid behind it. As I change LFO1, LFO1 effects will also change. So they're sort of interlinked. If we wanted, we could offset the effect of LFO1 with LFO1 effects and then map it to certain knobs. There's also LFO2 over here, which is a bit more basic. You kind of just choose your shape. Uh, but definitely mess around with these. They've got Euclid in here. So you're seeing there just at the start, it's boosting and then going back to bass. So let's continue. Let's bring back some of these options that we had on before. Let's turn on our stack and spread. And let's go to check out some of the other options here. So right here, we've got our amplitude and modulation envelopes, which are down here. We have the LFOs here, which I just addressed. And we have spread, which is over here. And then we have some MIDI and MPE options. So velocity and pitch, for example, if I wanted to take the volume of our notes and map it to the filter, I could have the louder notes opening the filter. So let's do that for a second. Let's check out our velocities. Right now, they're not perfect. As you could see, if you want, you could randomize them here. I liked how we had before, so essentially, Louder notes will now open our filter as we map this. So I'm gonna map the velocity to the filter frequency and see how it sounds now. So you can hear how those notes which are lower volume did not open the filter as much. There are some other options here which relate to hardware controllers, your pitch bend, press, and mod wheel. There's a completely random channel, and then note pitch bend and slide, which are also MIDI options inside the Ableton clip, and then cross modulation. So let's start adding a second oscillator. If we had maybe square fifth down here, and this one is perhaps um, an octave above. Let's mute the first one for a second and kind of key this in. And so let's add some random LFOs to the fifth amount and the pulse width. So how do we do that? Well, we have to tab over from A to B. A is the blue and B is the yellow. So now we're working in B and I'm gonna add LFO one to the fifth amount. And then I'm gonna add LFO one also to the pulse width. So now let's turn back on A. I'm gonna open the filter back up and let's start hearing all these sound together. If we want, we could go to B and copy the options we just, we just inserted over to A. I'm gonna undo that for a second. Let's maybe try cross modulation. So we're using our B envelopes and LFOs to affect oscillator A. So let's have LFO one, which we just dialed in, affect oscillator one. So you're hearing it sounds more like the fifth, essentially it's boosting the fifth more on oscillator one. I'm gonna mute oscillator two for a second. And I am going to go into the settings section. You could also add a little pitch bend if you want. You've got some glide here, so we could add some porta. There's also gliss. Porta is more of a continuous slide, and gliss goes up and down in discrete steps, so it could be useful if you're using one of the scale wear oscillators. Let's have B glide at a slightly different rate.
So tons of options for dialing in a melody. You could just start scrolling through other uh, oscillators as well. Now let's go through a couple of the presets and maybe see if we can start sketching out a track. Uh, we'll call this Meld Sketch. And for a kick, uh, let's just hot swap through the presets. So if you press this button here, it's gonna bring up the presets for Meld. So you can choose a kick and then draw on your quarter notes. So we have our kick, let's see. Your eighth notes, so you can go over here, divide by two, or multiply by two, essentially, to get quarter notes. It sounds a little wonky, but if we were going for sort of like a techno vibe, that could actually work. So now we've got our kick. Let's see if we can just get a sub in here using the oscillator called sub from Meld. So I'm just gonna draw in some notes here for the sake of time. I'm gonna go down to G and we'll just do a simple offbeat type pattern. Something like that. Let's see how it's sounding. All right, we'll stick with that for now. All right, now let's see if we can get some type of percussion in here using maybe the noise, filtered noise perhaps. Could sound interesting. Okay, so now we have some some highs. We'll quantize these. All right, and then, so of course we'd spend more time dialing in our kick and our sub, getting a perfect relationship, but let's maybe add a little background ambience. We gotta use the bubbles of the rain. The bubbles of the rain were cool. Definitely this is kind of like more of a fun bubbly vibe. So let's just get something in here. I'm just gonna record some bubbles and then we'll get them in time after. I'm just going to print this to audio, freeze and flatten track so that we don't have to deal with any randomness. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll add something like LFO tool and just use an in-time stutter, like a trans gate, so that it's automatically going to be in time with our BPM. Add some reverb. And I'll have this just be quiet bubbles kind of in the background. Take out some of the lows with an EQ.
go. That could be our fun little meld sketch. Alrighty, y'all. So that's meld in a nutshell. Hope you guys learned a thing or two. If there's a few things that maybe you know about Meld that we didn't cover, post it in the comments, post it up in our EDM Prod Mastermind community. And I think the key with Meld or really any synth is discovering how can I use it to sculpt my own personal sound, right? I was making sort of fun, wonky sounds, but you could use Meld to make chiller sounds. You could use it to make more aggressive sounds. If you're intimidated by sound design, just start saving presets down to your library. As far as I'm concerned, if a preset makes your heart sing, once you save it down to your library, it is now your sound. So don't overthink it, dive into a new synth, and I'm looking forward to seeing what everyone cooks up with Meld. Peace.